फाइव सेकेंड्स Mr. Speaker, sir, having addressed legacy issues, public sector banks are now proposed to be further provided seventy thousand crore capital to boost credit for a strong impetus to the economy to further improve ease of living. they will leverage technology offering online personal loans and door step banking and enabling customers of one public sector bank to access services across all public sector banks in addition government will initiate steps to empower account holders to remedy the current situation in which they do not have control over deposit of cash by others in their accounts reforms will also be undertaken to strengthen governance in public sector banks non banking financial companies are playing an extremely important role in sustaining consumption demand as well as capital formation in small and medium industrial segment nbfcs that are fundamentally sound should continue to get funding from banks and mutual funds without being unduly risk averse for purchase of high rated pooled assets of financially sound nbfcs amounting to a total of rupees 1 lakh crore during the current financial year government will provide one time 6 months partial credit guarantee to public sector banks for first loss of up to 10% further reserve bank of india is the regulator for nbfcs however rbi has limited regularity authority over nbfcs appropriate proposals for strengthening the regularity authority of rbi over nbfcs are being placed in the finance bill nbfcs which do public placement of debt have to maintain a debenture redemption reserve and in addition a special reserve as required by rbi has also to be maintained to allow nbfcs to raise funds in public issues the requirement of creating a drr which is currently applicable for only public issues as private placements are extempt will be done away with to bring more participants especially nbfcs not registered as nbfcs factor on the regulatory platform amendment in the factoring regulation act 2011 is necessary and steps will be taken to allow all nbfcs to directly participate on the regulatory platform efficient and conducive regulation of the housing sector is extremely important in our context the national housing banking is also 
regulator of the housing finance sector government has announced its intention to invest 100 lakh crore in infrastructure over the next 5 years to this end it is proposed to set up an expert committee to study the current situation relating to long term finance and our past experience with the development finance institutions and recommend the structure and required flow of funds through development finance institutions pension fund regulatory and development authority implements and regulates the national pension system and atal pension yojana through various intermediaries including inter interlia the nps trust keeping in view the wider interest of the subscribers and to maintain arms length relationship of the nps trust with pfrda steps will be taken to separate the nps trust from pfrda with appropriate organizational structure to facilitate onshoring of international insurance transactions and to enable opening of branches by foreign reinsurers in the international financial services center it is proposed to reduce net on fund requirement from 5000 crore to 1000 crore government has been following the policy of disinvestment in non financial public sector undertakings maintaining government stake not to go below 51% government is considering in case where the undertaking is still to be retained in government control to go below 51% to an appropriate level on case to case basis government has also decided to modify present policy of retaining 51% government stake to retaining 51% stake inclusive of the stake of government controlled institutions in order to improve the capital flows into the indian economy it is important to align domestic corporate systems and practices with global ones it is also appreciated that global finance movement in equity uses certain parameters to evaluate the stocks in which they choose to invest government intends to further encourage retail participation in cpses which of late has shown very encouraging upward trend in order to provide additional investment space the government would realign its holding in cpses including banks to permit greater availability of its shares and to improve depth of its market strategic disinvestment of select cpses 
would continue to remain a priority of this government in view of current macroeconomic parameters government would not only reinitiate the process of strategic disinvestment of air india but would offer more cpses for strategic participation by the private sector government is setting an enhanced target of 1 lakh crore of disinvestment receipts for the financial year 2019-20 the government will undertake strategic sale of psus the government will also continue to do consolidation of psus in the non financial space as well stop